So you're working on an idea, but you're spending a lot of time browsing through presets to find sounds that you know is most commonly used on current day productions, but you just don't know how to create it. Well, today in this video, I'm gonna uncover the 10 essential sounds that every music producer should know how to create. Stick around because not only will you level up your music production skill set, but I've also got a special gift for you at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Oh, so the first song we're going to focus in on is just a classic 808 or sub bass. Now, I'm going to be using Vital uh, to do these sounds in so that no matter which DAW that you're currently using, you could follow along. Vital is a free VST plugin that you can download and access. So you could follow along using the steps and principles I'm going to be showing you. Let's have our first oscillator set to a sine wave. And that's essentially the waveform that we want to have when we're thinking of using a sub bass. You're just playing it at a lower octave and the notes that you wish to use for your bass line. There you go. But to give it more of that 808 presence, we're going to enable our second envelope and we're going to sign that over to our pitch. So just drag and drop that over to pitch. And on the second envelope, we're going to be tweaking the actual envelope uh, so that it has a bit of this initial um, punch to the actual sine wave. So right now it's taking that pitch and shifting it all the way up. So what we want to do is just bring that decay really, really close and the sustain down as well. So you get that initial click right at the very beginning. And it helps create a little bit of that punchy and that presence with the actual uh, 808. Then we can click this and hover over that and assign less of that envelope to the pitch. Now we can go ahead and simply set our voices over to one. We just want one voice polyphony so we don't get any overlap. And head back to envelope one. And this is where we get to add a little bit of tail to release. This is all personal preference for you. So if you want your 808 to linger a little bit more, crank up the release. If you want less sustain, just bring it down. So that's going to focus on having a lot more weight on the initial punch on the front end of the 808. Now what's going to give it a lot of the harmonics and body is putting some distortion on that. So we'll put soft clip, crank the drive. And then you could run a filter post and then actual filter some of that out. Changing that uh, distortion will give you a different characteristic of the sound. So it's all up to you. All right, staying in the bass category, let's move on to another essential bass type sound, and that is a Reese bass, otherwise known as a Hoover bass. It's predominantly used a lot in drum and bass and current a lot of current pop productions and hip hop productions. And it's a really nice dark bass to use that creates a lot of gravity and weight to your productions. So for that, we're going to have oscillator one set to a sawtooth and oscillator two set to a sawtooth. And the trick here is to slightly detune one oscillator from the other. So now we'll go ahead and take oscillator two and slightly detune this. You start to move the detune till you get that type of tone from that oscillator. And then we make sure that both filters are, uh, both oscillators are set to filter one. And then we go ahead and filter that down. I'm also going to set this over to one voice polyphony. And we might want to use a little bit of glide so that we get this nice smooth transition from one note to the next. Now, everything from here on out is also just personal preference. Maybe just a little bit less on the attack. But there you go. Real quick, we'll get right back to the lesson, but I just want to give you the heads up that I have a free VST plugin for you. It's an instrument that I created called Orbit. It has amazing pad sounds and drones that you can use to add some nice textures and layers to your productions. And the best part is it's yours absolutely free. Just click the link below in the description box to download or visit beatacademy.com slash orbit. Now let's get back to the lesson. Now this next patch is a bass that I like to call the classic 80s juicy bass. It's got this nice 
rubbery, juicy tone to it. It's used in a lot of synth wave and just throwback and pop productions in general. And I think it's just an essential bass sound to know and how to utilize. So let's start off with a sawtooth as our first oscillator. And you can simply just head over to a unison and increase the voices if you have that availability in your uh, soft synth, whatever you're using. You can also accomplish this by enabling a second oscillator and detuning that. But for right now, let's go ahead and increase the uni unison here. And we're going to enable our first filter here so that that oscillator is routed to the filter. Bring down the resonance a bit. Now we're just mapping our second envelope to control the filter. So by bringing the decay down and the sustain of that second envelope, we can get that nice sound that we're going after. There it is. So now you start to tweak to your own personal liking. And so I'll go to the amp envelope here, maybe bring down the sustain a bit and open the release. And so, it's opening up a bit too much, so I can go over here to the envelope and just decrease the value. Now this next sound is pretty straightforward. It's what we call our super saw. It's the sound that dominates a lot of EDM and has overlapped into a lot of mainstream pop production as well. And it's just huge lead synth type of sound. It's hence super saw. So I think we're gonna start off with a saw wave. And uh, we'll set that to oscillator one. Now there's the easy way to approach this. If you're using Vital or Serum or uh, Wavetable, you can just basically go to your unison and increase it to maximum uh, voicing. So in this case, we'll probably go nine or 12, but. And then just increase the amount here. And that is it, straightforward. So to get a little bit more edge and bite, I would actually add a bit of white noise to this. So we'll head over here and add the white noise section by the sample oscillator and just lower the mix of that. So I have the release down in envelope one, meaning the second I let my keys go, the sound is gonna stop, but I might uh, adjust this if I wanted a little bit more attack. Uh, so it swells into it. And then the effects is what really gives a nice amount of depth and dimension. So chorus, once again, bring the mix down. And some delay. I'm gonna bring the attack back down because I want that initial hit. And bring the mix down. And let's try a bit of reverb. And bring that up. Now this next sound is a classic pluck, and this could be changed with any type of oscillator waveform to give a unique texture and tone to it. But these plucks are used in so many different genres of production. So uh, let's go ahead and dive in recreating that. So obviously by the definition pluck, it's short. And so we'll stay using the sawtooth right here. And this is mostly going to be created with the envelope two, mapped over to our filter. So I'll have filter one enabled, and just like we did with our classic 80s bass, we'll, clack, we'll drag that there. And what we're gonna do is now bring the sustain all the way down and bring the decay down as well. So you get that nice short attack. Now, just for personal preference, I'm gonna widen up the voicing here. Okay, and we'll bring that and we'll decrease the amount of the envelope. Right, so you get that there. And obviously in putting some effects, so we'll put some delay, uh, we'll put a stereo delay there every eighth note. Uh, we'll bring on the mix. And put some reverb here. And here's where you can just get really creative with you know, assigning the different effects that you'd like to add. So I'll probably put a flanger after the reverb to affect the reverb sound. And we'll put the mix down here, send a lot of that to that. A 
lower the mix of the delay and probably increase the uh, the size or the time of the reverb so we get some more tail. So yeah, and then if you switch out the oscillator, so let's go over here, basic shapes, we go from sine wave, we'll still maintain the same character, but we're having a different tone. All right, so now we'll go uh, change that to, let's say, a triangle. Solitudes, we already did the square. So there you go. So swapping out the different waveforms will give you a different tonality, which can be a really cool um, tone that you might be looking for in your productions. But the principle is applied the same way all across the board. Now, this next sound is what I find to be used a lot in creating some cool atmosphere. Uh, but this is this bell-ish type of tone that we can create. And for this, I'm going to start off using a sine wave. So I'll head over here, basic shapes, and we'll start with our sine wave. And this is all about playing at the higher register. So higher notes. And so similar to what we've done earlier, we're going to now map this over to our filter as well. Um, and we'll put this over here. And now we're going to similarly create, just like the pluck, we'll just create a little bit of decay and sustain, bring that down. So we have just a bit more of that uh, bite to it. And we're going to add some white noise to this. But we're going to have this follow the key as well. Okay. Now, uh, what we want is a little bit more tail from this. So we're creating a bell tone. So I'm going to bring the sustain down and of the release up. And if I go a whole octave higher, right? So I might want to lessen that envelope here. So we have just more of this, just a bit of that. And by adding a second oscillator, a whole octave higher, or a whole octave lower, depending on what you're playing, that'll give a little bit more shimmer to this. So now we'll lower this, make sure it's routed to filter one as well. And just bring up the level to your liking. Now I'm gonna lower the, the noise here and then the effects really help shape this. So a bit of course on sign, I love the texture it gives. So now you're starting to hear that electro piano type of vibe to it. A little bit of delay, we'll go ahead and put this in ping pong mode and bring the mix down and a short feedback here and reverb. Nice, lush, big reverb here. Increase the time. So you could take the noise out completely if you like and just have that nice clean bell type tone. All right, now let's create some pads. And pads are a great way to not only just create atmosphere in your projects, but helps fill in the gaps in many different forms of your arrangement when producing your music. So let's start off with a basic mellow type of pad. Now for this, we'll start off with our basic shapes and we'll start using our sawtooth. So I'll set this over to sawtooth right there. And this is primarily going to be shaped by our first envelope, which deals with our amp envelope. So raising the attack. So when it comes to pads, um, now again, you can change it, have your own personal preference, but usually we want a nice slow attack so it swells into the sound, right? And then we want a nice release. So once we let go of the keys, we have it lingering um, on. Now let's set this over to filter one. To enable filter one, bring down the resonance a little bit and just filter that out. Now, what I'm going to do is to give it some width and depth, we're going to increase the voicing here. So on the unison, let's go over to like seven voices, bring this down. And now let's just play. So we want a little bit more release. So it lingers a little bit more, bring the K down a bit and maybe just a bit uh, quicker tech.
And then what I like to turn on oscillator two, also set to a sawtooth. We'll do the same thing here uh, and, and select the sawtooth wave. And here, what I'll do is maybe go a whole octave higher. So we'll go 12 semitones up and just kind of blend in the level to my liking. Make sure I set this to filter one. Now we can go ahead and add as whatever effects we want. Usually a nice a little bit of delay and reverb can help create some dimension and depth with our pads. So that's our basic mellow pad. Now I add a bit of filter drive there so we get a little bit more grit in into this pad. But there you go, that's that basic pad sound. And if you want it to be a bit brighter, then you would just open up your filter envelope and giving you more brightness from the sound. Now this one is also another type of pad, but this is gonna be a little bit more brassy with a twist. So we'll start off again with a sawtooth. And as we did before, let's go ahead and this time, instead of having a slow attack, we're going to treat this with a strong attack at the front. We're going to bring the release up like this and bring the, uh, the decay down. So we get this kind of effect. Then we're going to enable our filter one and just simply route that same amp envelope, envelope one, over to our filter. And then lower the amount that it's affecting the filter. So we get this kind of effect. And let's increase the voices. We'll go from one voice unison over to eight. See how that works. Bring down the blend. There you go. And so you got that kind of now brassy type of approach. You can increase the decay a little bit. And so you can determine how much this envelope is going to affect the filter. So you can adjust that to your liking. But what I'm going to do now is go to our second envelope and I'm actually going to route this over to our pitch. And what this is going to do, this is going to pitch the envelope way up. So the pitch is going to go up when we play. And we don't want that. So let me shape this, bring the sustain down, bring the release, bring the decay down. So we get this really quick. Well, that's how we get our laser gun going. But if we go to this envelope and if we go, um, not transpose it, but if we go to the amount of the envelope and we go negative, then we're going to glide into the pitch. That's pretty cool. So then we can lower that amount. Just keep it really minimal and... Now, a really cool sound to utilize in your projects is just atmospheric drone sounds. And so picking up where we left off with our brassy pad, I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna create a nice cool drony pad that could even be a good starting place for you to get some creative ideas going. So with the brass pad that we just left off with, I'm gonna place my stock reverb right after that. And we have, now I'm gonna increase the dry and wet. And what we're gonna do is just simply bring a lot of decay. You can tamp around with your reverb settings the way you like them, but I'm essentially exaggerating the amount of reverb being sent to this sound. And then I'm going to hit the freeze button. And that freeze button will just freeze the state of this reverb after it's processed that sound. So I can adjust the size. Now, once I freeze it, what I can do now is simply just record it into another track. So once that's there, what I'll do is I'll have this track, an audio track in Ableton Live. We'll set it to resampling. And essentially, I'll do the same thing. So I'll just press one note here. We'll press the note C. So I know that this is going to be a drone in C. And we'll do that now. And then I'll head over to track number two and just hit record. Now I have this drone that I can use 
in my tracks, moving over and over again. Now, granted, you could, you can go ahead and customize, you know, this is just our brass pad going through that. But as you start to run this technique through any different type of sounds, you can go ahead and utilize the freeze feature to create really cool textures and drones that can then be used and recycled and repurposed in your projects. And this last sound, well, technically, it's not going to be something that you would create with the synth, but it's something that you can manipulate that we see in a lot of productions that can add some really cool dimension and depth, and that is just vocal chop manipulation. Taking vocals from a current session or an acapella and then using them in creative ways to just excite and just elevate your overall productions. So here is a vocal from the session that I'm currently working on now. So I can just take that into a blank MIDI track by clicking, dragging into that MIDI track. And then where the simpler loads that vocal, I can then head over to the slice mode and just simply use my MIDI device to slice individual parts. So nothing new here, but then it's all about how you create the rhythm and sequence that can add some life into that performance. So here is now the MIDI triggering that vocal chop. So the first rack here is the vocal in its normal state. And then this one here is the same vocal, but just a whole octave higher. And I'm just blending the two to get a unique texture to them. So just playing a sequence with these vocal chops in a unique way and creating a unique sequence with them is kind of giving itself as a leading instrument in the track, which I now want more prominent and actually using as a chorus tag, a, a section of a chorus where this is now highlighted. So a little bit of compression EQ, adding some dimension here with stock reverb, a bit more EQing, and then just giving it a little bit of ducking with the Nick Romero Kickstart plugin. And so this is what we have uh, throughout the song. Now, if you're thinking, well, why do we have to learn how to create this if we can just find presets that match or even are the exact same sounds? Granted, that's awesome, but this is giving you a fundamental understanding of how to create some of the essential sounds that are used on a lot of current productions and maybe even productions that you're wanting to create as well. Once you've crafted them and understand how they're created, then you could tweak them, save them as presets so that you can immediately go to them on the fly when you need them. There's nothing wrong with presets, but I think there's something really cool in understanding how to at least set a foundation of knowing how to create the sound, manipulate it, tweak it, and if you get some of these essentials down, you'll be able to kind of go from there to branch out and create really unique sounds that you would want to use in your songs. As I mentioned before, I have the free gift for you. I know how valuable your time is. So if you click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com, I have a bundle that I would love to give you for free. It's loaded with Ableton Live loops, templates, and effects that you can use, as well as sessions of many of the YouTube videos that are on this channel of songs, popular charting songs, in which I break down and that you can use, learn from, follow along with, and use the sounds in your projects, as well as a free VST audio unit uh, plugin called Orbit. Been loving using this plugin. It's a great way to just start your creativity and nice cool pad and drone sounds that you can load up with that plugin. All of this is for you, absolutely free. If you just click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com to access this download today. Be sure to like and subscribe and share this with a couple friends or two who are just getting started with learning how to make music. Hope this will inspire them as it inspired and encouraged you as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.